Hello. Um, it's very nice to see so many people in such a big room. If you're standing in the back, there is still some room in the front here. Um, so yeah, uh, it's nice to see WebAssembly drawing such a crowd. So, Pimmin, please tell us what is this about? Yeah, thank you. It's obviously an important technology and many people already know about it, but the organizers didn't know. So, <laughs> But this is also a reason for this talk to, to tell people about it. I work for SourcePol, that's a Swiss company. Uh, we are developers, we're doing QJS desktop and QJS server and WebJS um, and vector tiles and yeah, WebJS, this is this talk is a part of this WebJS work we do. Um, I have a talk tomorrow about the QGIS Web Client 2 and on Friday about vector tiles if you're interested in that, these parts. So, WebAssembly, um, <coughs> what is it? It's, on the one hand, a machine model and it's a binary execution format. So, as assembly is maybe known to programmers as a low-level language and this is also a low-level language, um, but it's not targeted to the processor directly, but to a virtual machine or this machine model, which is defined here. Uh, it's designed to be portable, compact, and it should be fast. And this portable thing, this is really interesting. So it's portable between different platforms, between different processors, and so on. And it is designed with memory safety and with a sandbox execution environment, so it's designed for security or to, to uh, run WebAssembly code, for instance, in a, in a browser where, the, where it has to be sandboxed and shouldn't crash the browser. Um, the memory model is quite simple. It's, uh, it has no direct access to the the browser memory, as you might expect, it is a, s a linear memory which is shared between the WebAssembly part and the JavaScript uh, part, uh, which is essentially a flat array. And to have a picture how, or uh, to an, an idea how it looks like or how it works, it, there is also a text format defined for WebAssembly. I mean, WebAssembly itself is a binary format, but you, there is also a standard for the text format, and that's how it looked like. And what you see is that it's, it is low level, it looks like assembly, but it is a little bit higher level than processor assembler code. It has this Lisp-like uh, uh, angles and it has also functions, if else, and so on. So it's it's not absolutely low level, but still low level. But uh, it is possible to program WebAssembly with this text format. Kind of predecessor of WebAssembly is ASMJS. I mentioned that, that some people mix it up, uh, which was introduced in Firefox 22, 2013. And ASMJS is a, a subset of JavaScript. So it's, it's still JavaScript, but it is kind of low level instructions made with JavaScript. It can also um, generated with mscripten compiler. And it can be used as a fallback for browsers which do not have WebAssembly support. But what we talk now is WebAssembly, which is its own binary format. Um, how do I get generate WebAssembly? Uh, a common language I write WebAssembly is C, C++. Um, and then I have this mscript compiler which compiles the C code to WebAssembly. And then I wrap around, wrap, include that in an HTML document and write some JavaScript to, to call it. And there are other languages which support um, compiling to WebAssembly. Uh, a very good language is Rust, which has also uh, like a manual mem memory, memory management, which is an advantage here because we don't have garbage collection in, in WebAssembly. So garbage collected languages, they need a runtime. Um, 
but these runtimes exist. So we have also a WebAssembly compilation for C Sharp and Go and other languages. But they have a little bit of an overhead because they read a, run, more, a bigger runtime for doing garbage collection, for instance. And there is also a, another format, which is assembly script, which is a subset of, of TypeScript, which is kind of JavaScript. So <laughs> you can write WebAssembly in a, in a JavaScript-like language as well. Or you can write it in this low-level text format directly. Yeah, you laugh, but people do that. Um, and what can be done in WebAssembly? That's an important question. So you can basically do calculations. You, do, you can do complicated calculations, which are uh, run on the CPU, when are CPU heavy. You can call JavaScript, and you can call WebAssembly from JavaScript. And also supported are futures in JavaScript, so, and asynchronous elements in, uh, in WebAssembly. But that's a question of the source language and the source runtime. And to transfer data between these two, you can either do that by JavaScript parameters, or you can transfer data via this, this shared uh, linear memory. But um, you can imagine that, for, for instance, for graphical applications, this is quite um, a, a good model. So you, you write your output into this memory, and you copy that into a canvas. And in a 2D canvas, for instance, and that's all you have to do. So you can do almost everything from WebAssembly. Uh, what is not uh, possible or not fully uh, supported yet is multi-threading, but it's coming and it's working on, on certain platforms. And what can't be done yet is uh, access, accessing the DOM, the, the HTML DOM of a, of a web application. Directly, you have to go through the JavaScript API. And you can't access all these JavaScript, uh, these web APIs. You have to call a JavaScript method, which calls the web API. But it's not a big problem. And all of this is coming. So this, uh, in this first version, we have uh, uh, this, this first set of features. And uh, the rest is coming. The browser support looks very good. So basically, all major browsers supported WebAssembly in, in 2017. Um, also, Android, iOS. And the only one which doesn't support uh, WebAssembly is Internet Explorer, which is not a big problem anymore. And we still have this uh, ASMJS fallback. Yeah, that's true. You can in the end execute, but I think they do uh, even uh, on the fly transformation to to ASMJS. Yeah, it's slow, but it's still working. And the specification, the main address is WebAssembly.org. From there, you find everything, and there is a W3C. Uh, community group and a working group which uh, writes a specification which is currently a, a release draft. But so this will become a, a standard. Okay, I picked a few examples of um, <coughs> applications using WebAssembly and the one I think is really interesting for JS people is, is AutoCAD, which have a, uh, an online version of their AutoCAD application, which has the same source code as the, the desktop application. So it's really compiled from C, C++ to WebAssembly. So they, they had earlier uh, web implementations, which had their own code base. And now they have a common code base between the desktop application and the web application, and you can go to that address, and if you have a license, you can start editing. I have uh, a short presentation of that, how it looks like. Okay, 
Ah, oh, here it is. Yeah, very short. Um, but still quite impressive. And another example is um, Google Earth, which is a similar case. Um, they always had problems with supporting uh, different browsers, different platforms. And what they did now in the newest beta release, they cross-compiled their uh, C++ application, the Google Earth desktop, to WebAssembly. And now it's running on, on all browsers. Um, i show you that as well. Oh. So this is on Firefox and Lino on Linux, which wasn't supported. It's quite flat here, but, but yeah, when you know Google Earth, you can uh, imagine how it looks like. It's really very similar to the desktop version, uh, but running in the browser in WebAssembly. Does it splice the network? Does it? Does it splice the network? I don't know. <laughs> I didn't try. OK, uh, there are many libraries compiled to WebAssembly. Uh, there is ASRI, ESRI. They have a blog post about their projection engine they compile to WebAssembly and gives you client-side projection support. Uh, and there are QT, this is a, a GUI library, which is, for instance, used for QGIS. Um, they have demos examples and they have quite good support for WebAssembly. Skia is an important graphics library, uh, which is the base of Google Chrome and also Firefox and Thunderbird, uh, which is now compiled to WebAssembly as well. So can use it within a JavaScript application uh, calling WebAssembly. PDFS Kit is also an early application which is for PDF creation. Um, which is also a good example what you can do on client side. So you can create PDFs directly in the browser. Uh, a few more applications. Have I enough time to show them? Yeah, I think so. We try this demo, which is a nice one. Okay. I mean, the slides will should will have links as well, and you can ah. It's not it's not coming, sorry. But yeah, you can try them yourself. There are many demos around. Uh, really nice things. <coughs> Before I go into the next chapter, I show you the list of this collection I had. So there is like Doom, a game. There are uh, Game Boy emulators. There is VI, Wim in the browser. There is an Nginx web server running as WebAssembly. There are Python interpreters and Go compilers uh, comp in, as WebAssembly. Maybe it's useless, I don't know, or <laughs> what it is useful for, but it's at least interesting and, and shows the potential of the technology. 
And so chapter two is about WebAssembly runtimes, because what we saw until now was the browser. So our runtime was the browser. But there are other runtimes as well. There are several runtimes which run WebAssembly st as standalone applications. Um, Mosmer, Wasmtime, Lucid. And the last one from Intel is, is targeted to, to small devices so that you can run WebAssembly on an embedded uh, device. Um, there is a standard for that as well, which standardize, uh, standardizes the environment or the, the uh, API to the, to, the, to the desktop or to the, the machine which is running this uh, WebAssembly application. And the first three, they support this standard. And there are other things as well. Wasmer allows you to embed uh, WebAssembly within other languages. So you can write, let's say, a Python application and call a WebAssembly library um, and get the result back to Python. And this for many languages, uh, you see the list there. And the last type of um, runtimes for WebAssembly are, for instance, these cloud flare workers, which are similar to to AWS Lambda, which uh, allows you to to run code in the cloud on on cloud servers. And but in, in on AWS Lambda, you have, for instance, JavaScript, and you have a Python environment, and so on. And here you have with Cloudflare, you have uh, uh, WebAssembly runtime, so you can use all these languages you want, like Rust, C++, and run them with in within the same runtime. And this, the, the, the startup time should be uh, faster than, uh, than on Lambda, because there is no virtual machine, and it has some uh, advantages. So what does that mean? Um, you can have portable binary code between different platforms, which is interesting. It could get an alternative on, on the desktop for Node.js Electron applications. Um, you can have multilingual applications, so applications written in Python or, and in C on the same, uh, within the same runtime for edge or serverless applications. And you have a can have a common runtime format for plugins. So if you call them from Python and so on, you want uh, a sandboxed plugin execution, um, then you can use WebAssembly for that. And you can even use it for embedded IoT devices. Um, so for geospatial applications, what can we, could we use WebAssembly for? And the top candidates which come into everybody's mind are Proj, the projection library which is written in C. So this is the perfect candidate for um, compiling to WebAssembly and then you have the same uh, library you can use in a, in a browser or from any WebAssembly platform. Um, I think it, it compiles to WebAssembly what I heard, but it's not published as a, as a package yet. And the same is for Geos, which, which is another important library, open source library in the Geos space, space which um, could also be very useful on client side and in the browser. And there are many more ideas for client side map printing. It's interesting. You could write a rendering engine for vector tiles in WebAssembly. Um, you could import shape files with Scoodle. You could do client-side routing. Uh, you could even build a desktop GIS in the browser. So I have two more slides uh, about speed. So there are many micro benchmarks, and they say different things. Most of them say it's very fast, but um, it's difficult, so it, you can't expect that it's extremely fast because even related to JavaScript, which has very good um, runtimes, 
it, you can expect that it's maybe 20 to 30 percent faster, but there are also uh, benchmarks which say it's slower, usually slower, maybe on some browsers it's faster, and uh, this Game Boy emulator benchmark, which is quite a uh, good benchmark, says it's 30 percent faster than JavaScript and Chrome, and faster on Firefox, um, so 60 percent on mobile, 90 percent on Firefox, but slower on Safari. And I also made my own benchmark because I'm also interested in, in comparing the speed to native code because you can have the same code running uh, as a native executable and running it in the browser. So I tested this world map generator which generates uh, random worlds um, and I generated a thousand per, uh, per thousand cells which is takes about uh, three seconds on uh, in the native with the native executable and in Firefox it takes 6.4 seconds so it's clearly slower but uh, for some that's I think that's uh, tolerable it's for for many applications that's really uh, a good speed and it should be faster than in JavaScript so that's about speed and a little outlook, so I say WebAssembly is here, um, it is supported, we should use it, and uh, Phosphor G applications will catch up, they have to catch up, they don't use it yet, but they will do, maybe, I, I'm not sure, maybe it will need some funding for, for the core libraries like Broich or, or Geos, which, which are very useful, but nobody uses it directly, so Funding is all, uh, always very difficult, um, and WebAssembly get, is getting better and better. So these are my conclusions. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Uh, we have time for one question. Anybody? Um, so you mentioned that multi-threading was still in the works. Uh, does that mean no GPU or CUDA yet, or at all? Do you know? I know everything. I saw everything of that. So cheap direct GPU access and uh, multi-threading, but it's not supported on all browsers yet. That's my understanding. Okay, and but WebGL. Um, you can. Many applications use already in WebGL, uh, but part of it is JavaScript, so you prepare all the triangle stuff uh, in WebGL, but in the end, I mean, WebGL does all the work, uh, so maybe preparation is not that fast, but the execution is WebGL. And it's really, uh, it's easy to use. You can do WebGL programming. Uh, uh, you have a good interface for doing that in, from WebAssembly. Okay, if the question is quick and the answer is quick, we can have one more question. So you mentioned, so you mentioned at the start that uh, WebGL can interact with the DOM, but uh, so how do you do um, rendering in WebGL, or sorry, uh, in Web uh, WebAssembly if you can't uh, interact directly with uh, the browser APS? You can call a uh, through the JavaScript interface. You can say uh, copy my linear memory to the canvas buffer, and then you have already your visualization. So that's one line of code for putting your uh, bitmap on 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 the screen. Um, and with WebGL, you also call the usual WebGL uh, API for doing that. So. I mean, in the background, there are some JavaScript calls, but depending on the source language, it's really you you do programming like you do in JavaScript with the, with the same API, calling uh, WebGL or calling uh, Canvas code or Canvas methods. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, Birnin, for your Thank you. talk. <laughs>